In this video, Jordan Peterson talks about the unknown and why it's important to be aware of it. So, and fire is a transformative substance, right? It's, it's this strange, it's this strange mode of material. If you put something in it, it turns into something else, which is very, very cool. And, you know, which is also extraordinarily useful, as it turns out. So, the fire, fire is a, fire is not only a transformative phenomena, but it can be used to represent other transformative phenomena. So the dragon is something that's innately attractive for a whole variety of reasons. It can breathe fire, it's very predatory. It's also, it's also an infinite creature, and that's why it has its tail in its mouth. It's, it's self-contained, it needs nothing else. It's, and this is where the, the symbol starts to stretch beyond the representation of the predator to the representation of the unknown as such. You know, so one of the things you might wonder if you're a human being is, well, what is the unknown like? And you might think, well, why do you have to understand that? And the answer is because horrible things come leaping out of the unknown all the time. And so then you might ask, well, is it better to figure out how to deal with each of those horrible things? Or is it better to learn how to deal with the source of all those terrible things, which would be the unknown itself? Now, you remember Tiamat in the Mesopotamian myth, when she went to war against Marduk, she was sort of in the background, it created all sorts of monsters, and then they all went to battle against Marduk. So I'm going to tell you a dream that my nephew had, and I think this is a good way of representing what this symbol means. Now remember, human beings abstract. And so what we're trying to do is to look at singular phenomena and abstract out what's common across them so that we can learn to deal with the common things so that we can apply it to the entire set of those things instead of having to... And, you know, we, we know in some sense, possibly, that human beings can do this and animals can't. And so I went and heard Temple Grandin speak at one point. And I don't know if you know who Temple Grandin is, but she's probably the most accomplished autistic professor and she has she has built when she was a small child she learned that if she built this enclosure that kind of tightened in on her that it would calm her down and she she applied the things she learned that would calm her down to calming down cattle when they're being when they're being held in pens prior to being slaughtered and so She's redesigned all the cattle handling facilities, or many of the candle, cattle handing, handling facilities in the United States, to keep the animals calm. And one of the things she's designed is this kind of spiral enclosure, so the cows can't see what's in front of them, basically. And it's fenced in, because if, if cows are going down a, uh, an enclosed area, like an alley, and there's a Coke can lying in the middle of it, they'll all stop and look at the coke can or they'd stop and look at a briefcase, they're kind of freaked out by these things and if they're walking down an enclosure and it's open and there's a windmill or something spinning off to the side, they'll stop and look at that too now, Temple Grandin thinks that she thinks like an animal, which is why she thinks that she can figure out how animals think and one of the things she said, I remember her her, her presentation, she said Okay, so if I say to you, church, what do you see in your mind? Just anybody tell me. What, what's, the, what's the prototypical church? How, how, would, what, how would it appear? Yeah. Okay, okay. Does that seem reasonable to people? What, 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 pop, what popped into your minds when I said that? Church bells. Okay. Okay. Stained glass. Okay. Okay. Now. When Temple Grandin thinks of church, she doesn't think of church, she thinks of a church. She can't abstract out the commonalities across churches. And she thinks that's partly why autistic people have a hard time learning language. Because for an autistic person, there aren't, there isn't the prototypical church. There are just churches. And she thinks that's how animals see. They see the particulars. They don't see the abstracted universals that unite the, the particulars. And of course that makes sense if you think about it. And, you know, one way of thinking about that too is that until you can abstract out the, 
the commonalities across a class of phenomena, and maybe you have to do that in an image, you can't talk. Because you can't use the word church unless what you do when you receive the word church is apply it to a class of phenomena, you know, that, that may have very little in common from a visual perspective. I mean, just think about how different a given church looks from different angles. Now, I don't know if you know about the autistic. There are artistic savants who can draw like mad. And so, you can see some of these people on YouTube. I mean, one guy is just absolutely, he's so amazing, it just staggers the imagination. They can fly him across the city in a helicopter, and then he can go home, and on this huge piece of paper, draw the whole city. He, can, he only has to see it for about an hour, and he can draw the windows, and like everything, and there are artistic people who can figure out how many windows are on a building with one glance. They don't see things the same way we do, they don't see the abstractions. And animals don't seem to either. And the reason I'm telling you that is because you got to understand the process of abstraction before you can understand what symbols mean. Now, what Jung believed that a symbol did was exactly what I just described, which was that there's a class of phenomena that we're struggling to understand. And the way that we build our first representations of it is an image. Just like you had the image of a church. And then you, you, can, you can label that image with a word. And then you can use the word, and that will evoke the image, and that will evoke the class of phenomena. But part of the reason that, he, that normal, so to speak, human beings can't draw, is because when they draw, they don't draw. They draw hieroglyphics. So think about, you know, you think a child's drawing of a person is very primitive. You know, head, stick, 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 stick. Maybe they put little circles on the feet or something. And you think, well, that's, you know, pretty primitive. It's like, that's wrong. That's really, really sophisticated. It's ridiculously sophisticated that a, that a child can figure out how to schematize a person with like five sticks and a circle, and then they, they know that's a person and that you do too. That's amazing. That's not primitive. Now, the autistic savants, they, they seem to draw, they seem to be able to draw so damn accurately because they don't see the abstraction, they just see the particularity. So, another really interesting phenomena that goes along with autistic drawing is sometimes you'll see, remember this girl who could draw horses like mad. She lost the ability later when she picked up language. But she could start with any part of the horse. She could start by drawing the tail. You know, which is not how a normal person would draw a horse at all. You know, first of all you'd sort of center it on the paper and then maybe you'd sketch it in and like it's work. You just don't start somewhere and like draw out a whole horse. And her horse drawings were like Michelangelo quality. They're remarkable. So, so this symbol, I think, this is the symbol that people were using, or that are, ah, that we use, to represent the ultimate unknown. And the ultimate unknown is a very difficult thing to represent. And so this, this symbol is making a case, and the case is, well, it's something like fire, because it's a transformative substance, and it's something like a predatory reptile, because it lurks in places where you don't expect it to lurk, and it can consume you. And, not, and it's also something like a spirit or a bird of the air, because it has wings. And, and why that is? Well, maybe that's because things come swooping down that you don't expect. I mean, there's lots of primates, small primates, that are attacked fairly frequently by predatory birds. And so the air is another place where the unknown can emerge. But the air is also sort of the place of spirit, and the ground is sort of the place of matter. And so this symbol here is a representation of the conjoined union of spirit and matter. And I'll talk about that a bit later, because that's a very, very complicated idea.